All right, well, I've got 2.01 on my clock, so, so let's do get started. Appreciate you all uh, joining us. There, there are 22 of us on the, on the call, so I would remind you again, uh, it'll help us all have a better experience and, unless you're speaking uh, to keep your mic muted. My name's Dean Phelps. I am the Director of Product Enhancement uh, for Saran Systems, the producers of CDM+. Plus. And it's my privilege to, to get to do a fair amount of training. If uh, uh, any of you were at the users conference last year, we, we might have met there. If not, I'm certainly glad that, uh, that you're on this call. Uh, we'll point out that we are recording the session. So after this is done, uh, I'll actually edit this video down because I tend to st stammer and stutter and say, um, a lot. So I get a chance to edit myself. And then we'll make that, uh, that recording available uh, so that you and others can then uh, look back in and uh, get a refresher or if somebody new comes on board and says, hey, here's a video on how to get started with, with CDM Plus membership. So that's uh, where I'd like to, to get started with. Like we say on the introductory uh, slide here, your, your CDM Plus membership database uh, is all about the people. Uh, it's people that really make up your church or organization. People are the heart of your church or organization. And so they're really at the heart of your CDM Plus membership program too. So when we talk about membership, um, I'm not using this word in a, in a legal sense, like who's, a, who, you know, who's part of this membership organization, but it's really who are the people uh, that have a relationship with my organization? Who are the people that, that have a relationship with my church? And how do we keep track of that? And how do we define that? And how do we stay uh, connected with those folks and help them stay connected with us and with one another? And that's really what, uh, what CDM Plus membership uh, is all about. So in our time together this afternoon, uh, we'll probably spend about 30 or 40 minutes, certainly at the end, I wanna leave time for questions, but we're really gonna cover a lot of ground. Uh, we're gonna talk about the two main pieces of CDM Plus membership that relate to people, and that's individuals and addresses. We're gonna go through actually how to add new people to your database and how to enter contact information for those people to record their email addresses and their phone numbers. Uh, how we keep track of some membership, you know, their relationship to the church or organization, some of their personal information. A lot of times in a church or organization, we have folks that are in uh, various small groups. You know, there are parts of groups within the life of the church. And so how do we uh, keep track of that? And how do we put people, move people in and out uh, of those groups. And there's also a recognition that your church, your organization is really uh, a network of relationships. And so can we define and track and understand uh, relationships that really maybe move beyond the walls of a household, that people are connected to one another uh, in ways that uh, go beyond just that they, that they share an address? And so we want to uh, spend a little time to talking about once we have people in the database, then how do we look those things up? How do we find people? And how do we print out information? How do we get uh, reports and, and listings of people? So uh, let's, uh, let's jump right in. I'm going to actually shift over now. All right, so we're gonna look into to CDM Plus here. And so again, what I wanna do first is put people into my database. Now there are a couple of ways that I can do this. The way that I recommend doing it is, you know, we're talking about people. And so what I wanna do is put a new person into my database. So I'm gonna open up individual records. I can start with program, membership, or individual records. Or if I have the welcome to membership uh, window open, so I can click individual records and let that open up. So I've got a blank individual record here. And so the first thing I want to do is come over here to the sidebar and I'm gonna add somebody. 
Now in CDM Plus, uh, individuals are grouped together into addresses or households. Uh, any individual record in CDM Plus has to have an address record associated with it. Now the opposite is not true. I can have an address record without individuals, but every individual in your database has to have a, a connected address record with it. So when I clicked uh, add on individual records, the first thing the system asked me is to choose the address uh, that this person belongs to. So we're going to add somebody completely new. So on this select address window, I'm also going to click add. And this is the Johnsons. And it's Sam and Melinda. And they live at 56 Treetop Lane in Big City, Kentucky. So I'm going to save that. I'm not going to add giving units this time. Take the contributions class and we'll talk about uh, adding giving units. So now here we are. I've added that address record and it's brought me back to my individual record uh, where I can start adding those individual people. So I'm going to add Sam. If I needed to give him a title like doctor or reverend or missus, I could do that here. If his legal name is Samuel, but he goes by Sam, I can record him as Samuel, put in Sam as his preferred name so that when I send him uh, information or communicate uh, out of the database with him, I can say Sam instead of Samuel. And then we can record his family status. What's his relationship within the household? A CDM Plus by default comes with head of household, spouse, child, and other. But this is something that you can define for yourself. One of the, the key features of CDM Plus is that uh, we're able to customize the software. You can customize the software to the way that you think and the way that you talk. So. Uh, if you wanted to do adult and child and spouse, uh, or adult, child, and other, again, define family statuses in the ways that you talk. But I'm going to, for our example, I'm going to record Sam as the head of household. And we see that we've populated his address information over here. And so that's what I needed for Sam. So I'm going to save. Well, there was somebody else in that household, so I'm going to add Melinda now. So again, I'm going to click Add under Do in the sidebar. And again, he comes up and says, okay, what address is this a part of? Well, it's where the last name is Johnson. So I'm going to find those folks. It's Sam and Melinda, so I'm going to pick that record, and I'm going to click Select over here to say, okay, it's Sam and Melinda Johnson's address. I'm going to add Melinda. Give her the family status of spouse, and I can start typing it and tab out, and it'll fill that in. And that's how you add uh, individuals from the individual record window. So I'm going to save that. There's another way that we can go about this. Uh, again, one of the powerful features of CDM Plus is that there's usually more than one way uh, to approach a question. I can also add individuals starting with the address record. So if I click address records in the welcome to membership window, he brings up that address record window and I click add. Now, he's not asking me for any additional information. Again, I can have address records that don't have people in them. So now we're going to add the Hamiltons. And this is just Xenia Hamilton. So I can come over here on the address, and in this little box here, 
this little box here, then I can start to put in her name, Xenia Hamilton, and I can record her family status here. So now when I save this address record, I'm not only going to save an address record for Xenia Hamilton, but I'm going to save an individual record for her as well. Again, take the contributions class and we'll talk about giving units. For now, I'm going to say no. In CDM Plus, you can always, from the sidebar, if one record is related to another, under this heading that says Go, I can always jump to those records. So you can see in this address record for Xenia Hamilton, I have an individual record for her as well. And this button in the sidebar under Go lets me jump to that individual. So I'm going to click that. And CDM Plus comes over to the, opens the individual record window with that related individual in it. So you can start to see now how, how things in CDM Plus relate to one another, how addresses and individuals go together. Again, an individual, a person in your database, has to have a related address record. But there may be times that you would have an address, somebody that you mail a newsletter to, but aren't really directly connected to the church. So you might have an address record that doesn't necessarily have individual records attached to it. So we've got Xenia in here. Let's, uh, let's add some contact information for her. So I'm going to click on the Phones tab. And whenever I go to Edit or Modify a Record in CDM Plus, I start by clicking Change. So I'm on the Phones tab. And I'm going to start by adding a phone number. And this is her cell phone. And it's 859-777-3333. And I can tab over here. Uh, if I were doing an office phone that had an extension with it, uh, I can add a note. I can mark it as unlisted if we don't want the, if, if Xenia didn't want this number shared publicly in directories or, or anything like that, I could mark this number unlisted. And again, when I'm working with contact information, I can see it for everybody that's in the household. And so I can see here that this is Xenia's cell phone number. So I'm going to save that. So now I have some contact information uh, for Xenia. The primary column, if you, if you think back a few years ago, to me it doesn't seem that long ago, uh, but I think it's longer than I think. There was a day when every household had a home phone, and it was sort of the primary number that you'd call if you needed to reach anybody in the household. That's not necessarily the case anymore, because now you have multiple people in the household, each usually with their own uh, cell, cellular or mobile phone, uh, sometimes each with their own work phone. So there are numerous phone numbers associated with a household. We still want some way to indicate if there's a number that is the primary way of, of reaching that individual, then I mark this button uh, under the primary column and say, this number's the primary one. So if I want to mark Xenia's cell phone as her primary number, again, if I'm going to edit or change anything, I start by clicking Change. I click that Primary button, and I click Save. And so now on reports where uh, there is a primary number listed, this is the number that's going to show up uh, for Xenia. If it's the case that none of these numbers should be considered primary, again, I can click Change. Here in the lower right, click Clear Primary, and that goes off. I can do the same thing for email addresses by clicking on the Email tab. It's the same process. Add an email address.
Again, I can add notes in the individual column. We note that this is Xenia's. I can mark it as unlisted if she doesn't want the address uh, shared with people in the church. I just click Save. So now we've recorded some contact information for Xenia. We've put in a phone number and an email address. And if I needed to add more, again, I can click change, come down here and add email address. Uh, if I click change and click the red X, that'll delete the address. Same is true on the phone numbers. On the email tab, I have this uh, at sign icon. If I just needed to jot off a quick email to Xenia, I could click that and send an email to her. CDM Plus also records some personal information. So we'll want to put some of, some of that information in as well as we have it. So again, I'm going to click Change. Record that Xenia is female. Oh, and her birthday is May 14th, 1982. CDM Plus calculates her age for me. Record her uh, Marital status is not married. Uh, if this uh, were a student, I could put in their, their school, their grade. I could put in occupation or workplace. When someone passes away, you can record their death date and where that happened and where they're buried as well. So there's personal information that we can record. So now that I've put that in, again, I'm going to click Save. And then the Membership tab talks specifically about uh, how is this person related to uh, the church or the organization? A couple of key fields that we might want to look at here are membership code and membership status. Again, these are things that, although they're fields in CDM Plus, the content of them you define because this is a place where you, you want to customize CDM Plus to the way that your church thinks and, and talks. How do you think about membership? Kind of, a, kind of a guideline is membership code would really answer the question, well, what different kinds of relationships uh, do people have to the church? So I might have membership codes such as member, visitor, uh, friend of the congregation, uh, former member. So again, what are those different different ways that we think about a person's relationship to, to the church? How, how are they related? And again, you need to, to define that uh, in your, uh, the way your church thinks and talks. So Xenia joined our congregation by transfer. Again, that's, that's how the church in this particular database thinks about it, talks about it. Your membership codes may be something different. Membership status, uh, I would think of this in terms of active, inactive, former. Uh, sometimes uh, churches or organizations will use the status to indicate that somebody is deceased as well. So what is their status? This person is active. I can also record the Sunday school class that this person is a part of. I can put their, their transfer date, where they transferred in from, uh, what church they came from, if they were dedicated or baptized at the church. You know, I can record all of that information here in CDM+. Plus. So I click Save. And I want to take a, a moment here and just drop in a little bit of a footnote. Uh, when somebody passes away, I, I noted that membership status can be used to indicate that. We could set a uh, membership status of deceased. Uh, some, some churches might also use family status for that, but an important thing to do on the individual record is under the name tab, come over here and check this box here where it says do not print. And what that will do is then when you're printing uh, directories and information like that, this checkbox will cause that to automatically be uh, excluded 
uh, from that report. So if somebody passes away, it's a good idea to come over here and check on the, uh, the do not print box. Your church or organization has various small groups. Sometimes these are small group Bible studies. Sometimes these are classes that people are a part of. Uh, it could be leadership groups in the church. So like members of your church council or church board. Uh, we'd record those things uh, in, uh, by putting them in, in groups. And one way to do that is here on the groups tab. So if I need to put Xenia uh, in a group. I can come to the Groups tab. Again, I'm going to click Change to do any kind of edits. And she is on a committee. In fact, she's on the Member Outreach Committee. So I choose that uh, heading for groups, and I put the checkbox in that indicates she's a member, part of the Member Outreach Committee. Well, she's also part of the Worship Committee, so I check that box on as well. What church groups is she in? Well, she's part of the altar guild. Again, I can do all of this here. And if I need to add a new group uh, here in the groups tab, I can click the plus button here and say there's a different group type. I can also add to this church groups group type as well by using the, the add button. Once I have her in, in those groups, then I can click Save. And now I can see here on the Groups tab uh, what groups she's a part of. I'm going to skip over now and go to uh, this, this Connections tab over here on the far right. Because this is the way that we can actually define relationships with people outside of the church. So, or I'm sorry, uh, maybe outside of the church. What I meant to say was outside of, of a household or an address. So, for example, uh, I could have adult siblings in the church that don't share an address, but I want to record that uh, those, I want to record those relationships and keep track of those. And we can do that on this Connections tab. So I'm going to click Connections. At this point, it says there's no information to display because we haven't defined any connections yet. If I click Change, then it pops me up a window with Xenia Hamilton at the heading, and I'm going to add a new connection by clicking the plus sign here at the bottom. I'm going to relate her to an, one of the powerful pieces of connections is I can connect any record type with any other. Right now, I'm just going to connect this person with another individual. So I click on individual records, highlight that, click next, and I'm gonna click show all. I'm gonna show all of the individuals in my database. Well, Ryan Cassidy happens to be Xenia's brother. So we're gonna record that. So I select Ryan, I click the select button, Xenia Hamilton is Ryan Cassidy's sister. Oh, we haven't defined any sisters yet, but I'd like to add it. Yes, I would. And Ryan Cassidy is Xenia Hamilton's brother. I need to create that one as well. And then I'm done, so I click Done. And I click Save. And now I have that sibling relationship recorded in my database, uh, even though these people don't live in the same house. Uh, you might want to also do a parent and child relationships in your database as well, because there's this funny thing that I've noticed that children do. Uh, they grow up and they get married and they establish their own households. So they're now in a different address. Well, if I have that information recorded in connections, then I never lose that relationship. Even as people move around and change addresses, uh, I continue to, to have an understanding of that network of relationships that, that makes up the, the congregation. 
there's certainly more on here that, that we could talk about. There are some of the other webinars and classes that we'll, we'll do that we'll get into to what some of these other tabs are. So we've, we've covered some of the basic, you know, how to enter name information, how to enter phone numbers and email addresses and contact information, recording some of the personal information, some of the membership information, We've got people into groups, and we've shown how we can build connections uh, between people, you know, define and, and understand connections that aren't necessarily within the same household or address. So if I need to find people in my database, in my record frame, uh, a lot of times up here at the top, right under the title bar, you'll see what I call the, the search bar or the find bar. Right now, I'm not seeing that, so I'm going to come over here into the sidebar, and I'm going to click Find. So now I've got a, a panel up here where I can build the search that I need. So I can look for, for example, I can look for individuals where the individual last name equal to Hamilton. When I click Find, well, that brings up all the Hamiltons in my database, and there's only one. You can see in the divider bar here, he found one result. I can also search on some of those the groups that you saw us create. So if I search, I can look for records where church groups. You see I've got a little arrow here that I can drop down the list. Uh, I want to find people that are in the altar guild. Click OK. So you see what I'm doing here. Find records where church groups equal to altar guild and click find. And now I've got all of the people uh, listed here. It's got Xenia highlighted because that was the last record I had active. But up in, in here in the results window, I have all of the people who are members of the altar guild. But what if I wanted to print a directory? Of these uh, of these folks. Well, now I have the altar guild here in my individual results. But again, over in the sidebar, I can click print, and I have uh, different reports that I can choose from. I could print letters to all of these people. I can send emails to them. I can do master and custom listings. I'm just going to do an individual directory from notice this ready radio button at the bottom from the results list. Choose individual directory and click OK. And so now CDM Plus opens up uh, an individual directory report window. On the search tab here, notice he's saying that the results from the individual records will be used. On the report, I can say, do I want to put in, do I want to include membership info, birth dates, or any of that? Do I want this in alphabetical order or zip code order? Do I want to show line numbers? Let me look at the format tab. How do I want names formatted? Well, I don't want last name first, and I don't want to put the last name in bold. What phone numbers and emails do I want to include? Well, I do want to put in individual phones and individual emails. And so now I can click the refresh button, and there's my directory of folks in the Altar Guild. Simple as that, I can move from, I have a group of people identified in my individual records window, just this easy to, to print a directory of those folks. That was all I had uh, to cover. Uh, if you don't want to stick around for questions, I will certainly want to say thank you for, for joining. Hope you can join me for a future online training. And again, thank you for joining me today. Take care.